I didn't smoke as much as nearly as much as I thought I was going to smoke. Yeah. Well, we didn't have the time we thought we were going to have. No. Like, I mean, shit, he brought three fucking books and downloaded a bunch of stuff. He didn't crack a book. Yeah. yeah. Like, I brought a book. I think I brought 10 pages one afternoon to fall asleep. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, like, but yeah. even like everybody else, like there were some cigar smokers that were on the, on the boat with yeah. us. And yeah. every night I'm like cigars and I'm like, oh man, tomorrow maybe. <laughs> like, yeah. No problem. Yeah. We're just tired, bro. Yeah. It was a lot. We're just tired. What's up, everybody? Uh, it is Wednesday. We are sitting in a circle. There are sticks in our hands. There's about to be some drinks on the table. Johnny boy, what do you think we're about to do? We're about to masturbate. You goddamn right, kids. It's time for that Freedom Friends Master Debate. Uh, a little bit different today. Um, it's kind of uh, the first in-person uh, recap of the trip that uh, John and I went on down to Turks and Caicos. So, um, so I'll play the role of the curious audience. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, and I and I brought us something. Yeah, I did. I brought us something. Uh, John, you want to set this up while I, I set this up? I do. So, when we dive, um, and I mean we've talked about it a little bit too, but it was literally they told us three things. They're like, if if you're wet, it's time to eat. If you're dry, it's time to dive. And if you're tired, it's time to sleep. And that, they told us that like when we first got on the boat and yeah. I was just like, okay, whatever. But Wednesday I was like, there's no better way to explain it. Yeah. Like, cause if you're wet, that means you just got dive. So you get out as soon as you get off on the boat, they have food, whether it's an actual meal, breakfast, lunch, or dinner or just snacks. You want me to make you one? Yeah, yeah. you do. Yeah. Um, and so, and they were all, it was just like gourmet food. It was, it was insane. But Dude, so they Miguel, would do that. Our cook motherfucker and yeah. I, t- I told him that if he had if he had had a vagina i'd take him away from all this i, I, told, him, <laughs> I told him i don't care if you have a vagina or not <laughs> i was like dude if you were a woman i would take you away so yeah, it was, we w- woke up ate breakfast and then we did a dive come back from the dive they had a snack then we do our second dive in the morning and then we get done with that and it's lunch and then we get done with that we go yeah. do a third dive then we get done it's a snack and then we do our fourth dive we get done as dinner and then we do our fifth dive which is a night dive Right. So when we get done with the night dive, as soon as we get back on the boat, they don't have snacks for us. I'm I'm watching him pour this and it's not pouring. It's I gotta need to shake her up. It's a uh, chunky. Oh. I don't know if chunky's uh huh. Guys, it wouldn't be the Freedom Friends if we didn't talk about our number one sponsor, Warfighter Tobacco. Obviously, you guys have seen us all smoke them. We're here to talk about a quality product that everybody can enjoy. The great equalizer, as we've called it, the Warfighter Tobacco Stick. And it's not just cigars. They've got humidors, travel humidors, cutters, lighters, everything you need to get started on that journey. Check out warfightertobacco.com and use that code FTFO. Score yourself that sweet, sweet 15%. If you want to know my personal favorite, I'm a 762 Field guy. I like that Sumatra, real nice and even keeled cigar. Great for us beginner smokers, right? And I'm told that these taste even better when you're listening to the Freedom Friends podcast. Now, Back to the show. This episode is brought to you by Grill Your Ass Off. It's no secret. We're all middle-aged dudes who love barbecue. Grill Your Ass Off is our name, main go-to for our spices. That's what we use, man. Whether you're doing burgers on the grill, steaks, or my personal favorite, a little bit of pork belly burn ends, right? They've got you covered on all of that. They also have salsas. They also have seasonings and spices. They got beer salts. They've got everything, man. Check them out. GrillYourAssOff.com slash Freedom Friends Podcast or... Use the code Freedom Friends Podcast at checkout. That's weird. I don't know. Is it frozen? No. Nope. Then that really is grossing me out. <laughs> <laughs> In case anybody ever wondered if the Freedom Friends were scripted. Yeah, that was pretty fucked, man. Oh, that looks gross. Pour it in the next cup. What does that do? Did it mix or is it still glug? Okay, no, it, it mixed. Okay, we'll pour that back in here and mix it though. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> third <laughs> world, everybody. It's from the third world. <laughs> so after the night dive, uh, instead of having a snack for us, they have nice, tasty, warm, hot chocolate. Uh, but it's adult hot chocolate. Okay. And they mix a local uh, Irish cream in with it. Now, I am so thankful I watched you pull the seal off of that bottle, or I may have thought they sent you home with uh, a parting gift. that. Uh, for real. Yeah. For real. Seal was here. It was there. It was yeah. good. But you were right. That was uh, That was a little... Odd. That was a little odd. I don't yeah. think it's supposed to do that. It tastes fine. It smells fine. Yeah. It's it's fine. Yeah. It'll all work out. 
Uh, but anyway, so they made us hot chocolate. It's good alcohol. With, uh, what do they call it? The Caicos cream? It's called Caicos cream. They kept calling it Bailey's, and I was like, stop calling it that. Yeah, that's not Bailey's. I was like, dude, like, be proud of your shit. <laughs> like, um, this is your shit. But so that first night when they mixed it for us, because they make it in the handy of the cup, and you watch them pour it. Um, I'm not doing that. They literally <laughs> made it 50-50. Yeah, fifty percent hot chocolate, fifty percent this, and that's not high alcohol percentage. It's like twelve or sixteen percent or yeah, some shit. It's flavor, but between just the environment coming off of the dive, the whole nine, and then they hand you that and it's warm. It tasted like it was fucking rocket fuel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I was then like, they'd be like, "You guys want some beers?" I'd be like, "No, I'm still shit faced from hot cocoa you gave me." <laughs> <laughs> but it was like. So delicious. I mean, it's 80 something degrees. We're in the you yeah. know, Turks and Caicos. The water temp's 86, the coldest it was. Right. Um, and they hand us, you know, you're wet. Jesus, open, Mike. Open it all the way. There you go. Are you? It ain't me, dude. It isn't? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me how to do this better, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, definitely not editing this show. Yeah. <laughs> Well, a little bit, but not like it'll be like a fast forward of us just fucking cussing. <laughs> like, sound like the chipmunks pissed off. Just <laughs> shake that up a little bit. Might be a good idea too. I'm afraid. <laughs> See, it's not me, dude. It's gonna be a repeat of when Mikey brought his soda stream in. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm gonna open this. It's gonna be like, yeah. I, like, I like that we've kept fucking paper towel here for that reason. <laughs> you have a great track record with bringing in booze. I know, man. What the fuck? There we go. Oh. Nope. Oh, dude, you're fucked. That was just you missing the glass. Gym. No, it's just coming out from random places. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to. Like I tried to do good. I'm sorry. Uh, you know what? Here, <laughs> line those up for me. I got a I got a system. <laughs> we're okay. Keep talking. We're gonna be here for a minute. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we're about to do something. I'm not sure. I really want to. I'm yeah, honest. you do. It's delicious. Once it touches your lips, it's fucking wonderful. Right. <laughs> and John and I, John and I have just become accustomed to this kind of bougie behavior. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so you guys were the white trash on the dude. Boat. We were dude, we were princesses on this love boat, bro. <laughs> No, Mikey. The bell of the ball. <laughs> <laughs> we, you did do you did do a TikTok video mm -hmm. that we will have to attach to the end of this or something because it, it was, was probably cool. oh, the funniest. Shit. <laughs> oh shit! Oh, it started working, huh? <laughs> it was probably the funniest thing I've ever seen you do. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mikey. We're gonna need a we're wow, gonna, wow, you guys, <laughs> dude. That thing just took off. <laughs> what in the fuck is going on? Mikey, we're going to need a play-by-play -play, because unfortunately we won't be able to attach it due to copyright because it's an actual song. Um, but uh, it was uh, well, fucking it, amazing. It's the wonderful song. Uh, attach uh, the link. I'm on a boat. I'm on a boat. Yeah, put the link. I'm on. Yeah, yeah it's in the description, but yeah. it's the it's the uh, wonderful song by the Lonely Island, I'm on a boat. Basically, so there was a couple dives that I couldn't go on. Um, I had some inner ear issues that were fucking me up pretty bad. Like I couldn't get my shit to equalize right. And as much as I like diving, I like having eardrums more. So I decided to, uh, you know, I'll I sit this one out right here. Justin, you should probably, I can see the, you might want to give it a little a shake. Around. Now, granted, these are also change color fucking <laughs> cups, man. Oh, are they? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these are change color cups. I got lids for us. Well, I, I just saw the shit in the bottom. <laughs> there, here's a, here's a lid for you. <laughs> uh, don't, I mean, it's funny, but it's uh, not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad because Mikey has change color cup, right? <laughs> I got children, dude. This is, J -Mo, this is one of Jamo's yeah. juice cups, yeah. motherfucker. <laughs> Mikey's playing it off like he didn't see these and went, oh, I want those. <laughs> Here, John, just look, look at them and tell me they're not dope. <laughs> I, Scott, I thought the same thing, though. I saw the yeah. color. Here, like, oh, there's something floating in the a bottom. A nice yeah. close up. I was like, yeah, y'all still fuck this up. Oh, yeah. It's just as good. Yeah. Okay, that's wonderful. <laughs> it's nice, right? It's so good. Yeah. This is what we now. Granted, I also boiled sugar in the water before I made this. Oh, as you should. Right? Like yeah. I, that ain't my first time. <laughs> like I'm a hot cocoa guy. No, it literally like the first day was cool, and then like the second day, like it was like, oh, this is really nice. And then by the third night dive, it we was like, like, where's our chocolate? Yeah. <laughs> and then at the end of it, they're like, okay, who's not doing the night dive? And a couple of people will put up and like, okay, so we need ten hot chocolates. <laughs> <laughs> 
John, what was the name of the boat y'all were on again? The Aggressor 2. The Turks, Turks, and, Caicos. Turks and Caicos Aggressor 2. Yeah. I'm going to see if I can uh, pull there's up. A, the, there's a good picture on my Instagram. There's And, and their, their website, I mean, you just Google it. There's so much out there about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that liverboard company in general. And it's such a cool fucking experience, though, man. Like, the captain, the crew, which if you guys watched the episode. Yeah, yep, it. there she is. Uh, if the, if see that see that last little window on the bottom that's john's room yeah no right on the bottom oh. at the bottom that's yep. john's room mine's next to it yeah. <laughs> and in between those windows was the bathroom that we shared yep <laughs> yep we uh we were, we were definitely um rocking the boat the crew quarters <laughs> were bigger <laughs> yeah no yeah we were in steerage we were like fucking jack from uh titanic man. yeah we were we were definitely the the peasants on the boat yeah everybody else had some really nice ones mm-hmm yeah, hot tub up on top there. Yeah, <laughs> I wish y'all did. You guys use the? Photo? Uh, I never. The did. I never did. No, I, I did in the video. It looks like well, you, you <laughs> opened it up. Uh, yeah, you like, in it, but yeah, I never it got it. Looks kind of small. Like you uh, fit three people in there. Yeah. There was four dudes in there at one point. Yeah, not surprising. Not at all. Um, but the thing you can only be in there for like ten minutes, um, just because of diving. Um, yeah, you don't want to soak in it for like an hour because it. Uh, you could, if you happen to have a, a high level of nitrogen in your body, it could release a bubble into your yep. stream. Oh, that's a uh, dinner. That was uh, that's that's where John and I sat. John was here. I was there. Yeah, <laughs> that was our dinner spots for for every meal. Really, it was. Uh, I mean, the food was phenomenal. The food was amazing, dude. Like, I mean, they bring on like an exe- executive chef. Yeah, Mike. And, and the crazy thing is, is the the kitchen that they worked out of. It's a four burner stove. It's fucking nothing. And man. a toaster uh, oven. And like a microwave. And this dude was making gourmet shit. Like it was impressive, dude. Like, yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. It was awesome. So yeah, Keiko's cream and hot cocoa. Let's see the bottle. There you go. You got a bottle of this, dude. Did you try the cake shit? I did not. Fucking. Yeah, their money. Wonderful. <laughs> so they make rum cakes out of their local cream or out of their local rum. And uh, the captain of the boat, Mateo, was telling me about this this kind of rum cake. They sell it duty-free at the airport. It's called Mombata or something. And it's named after an African tribe. It's a cool story. There was an African tribe that they had went and took back in the days of the slave trade. And these fuckers would not conform. They couldn't get these guys to work. They were just fucking assholes. They were the first. If, I think they are the world's first thugs. If, <laughs> <laughs> and if you are, as a tribe, going to be taken as slaves, you should not conform. 100 percent well <laughs> these guys were such a pain in the yeah, ass for all that, you tribes out there listening yeah. Yeah. Thanks, God's advice. Yeah. <laughs> these guys were so such such a pain in the ass to the colonizers which is our word i've decided we're taking that all right if i get called a colonizer i'm gonna be like hey that's our word <laughs> <laughs> only i can say that <laughs> only i can say that that's our word nice <laughs> um but essentially they were such a pain in the ass colonizer <laughs> Oh, careful with the C word, guys. <laughs> no, the hard R belongs to us. <laughs> we get the hard R. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, we invented both of them. <laughs> they were our words first. I'm just saying. <laughs> and I'm not saying they agree with it. I'm just saying the facts. Anyways, uh, apparently this, this cr- tribe was such a fucking rebellious group of fellas. That they were like, fuck these guys. They dropped them off on the island. And they were like, keep them. <laughs> they, were, they just gave them their freedom. So these guys were so rebel, yes. and uh, they were just fucking gangster, I guess. So they were like, all right. So th- this is all the rum that they started producing and stuff, and they named it after the trap. Oh, so the what is it? Mombata is the rum. That's the name of the cake. But the, they started doing the the rum. They started producing. They na- they named the cake after that trap. Right. Do yeah. you know Do you know the local rum? Uh, yeah, I, I have it at home. I don't remember what the fuck it's called. Didn't they? Didn't wasn't he saying too that they named the Caribbean Ocean after a, a cannibalistic? Yeah. Um, the word Caribbean um, is named after a cannibalistic group of people. Huh. A cannibalistic tribe. tribe from that area. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was two tribes on there. One was real diplomatic and cool. Well, it was actually in Puerto Rico, or yeah, uh, Española, that island. Yeah. Well, he basically said that half of them became that, and the other half became Haitians, and and that, and I was like, "Oh, makes sense." Fucking I, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. So the Caribbean island is actually named after the you you. I mean, as a Caribbean tri- as, a, as a cannibalistic tribe, there's probably a like 
you're not going to last forever, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, eventually you're going to run out of people to eat. Yeah. <laughs> Especially on an island. That's a finite group. Of, right. <laughs> that's a finite amount of folks. Right. right. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> and you're an asshole. That gives a whole different <laughs> definition. You know, like we can sit here right now and go be like, hey, Mikey, I'm hungry. Right. If we were in that tribe, I'm like, hey, Mike, I'm hungry. That's how I start. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> that's how I start threatening my kids. <laughs> I wouldn't be worried. I'd be like, hey, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want a snack? I was about to say, bitch, I'm an appetizer. <laughs> <laughs> you are a snack, buddy. <laughs> Such a snack. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Um, no, dude, it was... Ah, fuck. Like, my ears are still having issues. Like, yeah. as we sit here on... This is Monday. And uh, my ears are still kind of weird. It feels interesting having headphones on. Which it actually is the first time I've heard really well. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so give us a rundown. How did the week go? You get to, uh, you flew out of wherever, got to. Uh, well, so travel wise, everything went amazing until John opened his fucking mouth. <laughs> no, no, we're saving that. Till the end. <laughs> no, but just in general. <laughs> just in general, it was phenomenal. Like we got there. And, well, my, tra- my trip out there was weird because I'm named after my stupid father. So <laughs> apparently when I book my tickets, I have a Southwest account. Yeah. So I and I had to book two one ways because I used love vouchers. Right. Yeah, yeah. This whole fucking trip cost me fifteen dollars. Nice. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> so I used love vouchers. But when you do that, you have to book one way. So I had to p- book a one way from San Antonio to Turks and Caicos and one way back. Right. No big deal. The problem is, is that my passport has Junior on it, and Turks and Caicos requires uh, a round trip ticket. They in retire. Order to get a visa. Yeah. They retire. Oh. So so they had to do a little bit of fuckery at the. Uh, San Antonio at the airport. San Antonio airport desk, right? Oh, I got you. Which was easily at least they done. knew about it. Oh yeah, no, she figured it out. We, well, I mean, at first it wasn't. It, at first it was a big issue. Like you can't, we can't get you a visa. You can't be on this flight. Yeah. Oh. And then they figured a way to make it look like a round trip, uh, or to to classify yeah. it as a round trip because it technically yeah, it was right. Yeah, and I just explained to him, hey, look, time. I used your fucking policies with your love vouchers. This is on you. You fucking fix it. And they were like, you're right. So <laughs> that's what happened. Um, so they uh, they got it all squared. But it was like within like 20 minutes of the flight. And I'm, yeah. like, I'm not going to be surprised if my shit doesn't show up. Uh, you know what I mean? I honestly thought I was like, I'll probably not get into my I'll get my bag delivered tomorrow. Right. Or some shit, which I would have been fucked because we would have been out of port. They would have to take a tender out and meet us. Yeah. Luckily, we, we were just right off of the uh, the coast of Providence. Yeah. Yeah. At that yeah. point. So. um we get there and like the first guy John asks about a taxi is our taxi driver. <laughs> Fucking somehow. He was like, Oh, are you John? Is that Mikey? And he's like, uh, yeah. Well, he's can, like, oh, I'm here to pick I, you guys up. We were like, what the fuck? I, <laughs> I've traveled in enough Central America, third world yeah. countries where I know how the airport works. Right. You walk out the door. I'm a fucking sore thumb. Yeah. I scream American. You know what I mean? No, and you're a mark. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. so it's just like you know, we're 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 supposed to have trans that was already uh, arranged. And so we walk out, Mikey goes to have a cigarette, and I'm like, I'm gonna go figure out where the fuck our our you know yeah. taxi is. Yeah. Or our, our transportation. And um, so I go to walk to go talk to people, and like nobody looks like they know what the fuck they're doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like there's rental car tables, but clearly they have no idea. And so I just walk up to a guy who looked like he worked there and I'm like, Hey, uh, I'm looking for, you know, transportation for the, Tur- for the Turks and Caicos aggressor live aboard. And the guy literally, he just like looks and he goes, talk to him. And I was like, okay. He's like, here we go. Like, that was it. And I was yeah. just like, okay, this dude just pointed me, yeah. you know? And so I walk up and I'm like, Hey man, uh, I was told to come talk to you about, um, you know, getting to the, uh, aggressor live aboard. And he's like, yep, you got the right place. And that was it. He's like, are you John? No, 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 no. That wasn't it. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and he's like, yeah, we're right in this car right here. I was like, well, I got another guy with me too. And he's like, ah, cool. Just tell him to get in. And I was like, wait. And I'm like, we were supposed to have trans already arranged. He goes, yeah, that's me. And I was like, okay. And he's like, what's your name? And I'm like, who are you here to pick up? <laughs> right. And he's like, are you John or Mikey? And I was like, oh. I'm like, well, I'm John. That's Mikey. I was like, we'll be right in the, in the van. <laughs> yeah, I, was like, I was like, I'm like, Get sorry, the fuck man. Out of here. Like, that never happens. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know how Uber works. I was yeah. like, sorry, man. I, I thought we were getting taken advantage of. He's like, no, 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 no. Well, then as we're leaving, I see this other cab driver with this dope ass shirt. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're in the airport. We're in the vehicle driving off. And Mikey's like, oh, I want that shirt. Cab and the cabbie's like, up, he's, he's like, like, this one? And he's like, yeah. And he pulls up and he's like, 
I don't even remember the guy's name. He's, like, well, he's, he, like, hey, well, he's like, hey, Steve, uh, he wants your shirt. Do you want to sell it? Yeah. <laughs> and, it was, and he was like, he was like, how much? How much? <laughs> how much for that shirt? And I was like, we just sat there laughing. And he was like, ah, no, all right. He just took off. Right. <laughs> it, was, it was like, I'm going to have to switch him shirts because these guys going to need a shirt. And at the time, I was wearing your Silencer Co. Oh, <laughs> okay. and yeah. I was like, damn it, I like this shirt. But. It would be a. It would be worth the story to give it to him. Yeah, it, was, it was a very bright shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like one of the. It was like one of those African cuts, yeah. like the button up, like right. down to here type of things and shit. It was just real bright. Like you could buy it at a fucking any tourist yeah. spot, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. So we get we get on the we get to the boat. Well, first things first, we see the boat. They drop us off. They're like, all right, just leave your stuff here. You're good. And we're like, okay. And they're like, everybody else is over here in this bar. Like they wouldn't even let me bring my gear on board. Yeah. They got mad at me for picking my gear up yeah. out of my room and bringing it up. Yeah, you know? same. Like, we told you to leave it in the hallway. I was like, I, it's eight steps. Yeah, dude. Like, <laughs> no. like, Maybe they're just afraid people are going to beat the shit out of their boat. You know what I mean? Either that or they're just so accustomed. They're, they're not used to cunts. a veteran, yeah. you know, prior yeah. military guys right. that will actually, you know, they're, they're used to catering yeah. 100% to every single person on the ship. The cost of this is usually 3500 bucks a yeah. person. So people who can afford to drop fucking... Six, ten, twelve grand, like that. They don't carry their own fucking bags, <laughs> right? Type of shit. Yeah. Whereas veterans were like, "No, fuck that." Yeah. It, which even if we can afford six, ten, twelve grand, I'm still carrying. My we're bags. carrying our fucking bags, yeah. man. Yeah. You know, like yeah. I mean, situation. That's hockey player yeah. rules. Yeah. You're never too fucking young or too old to carry your fucking yeah. bag into the court <laughs> or into the ring, that man. Like yeah. yeah. Um. So uh, we go over to the bar. We we sit down with the, like everybody. They're all like, "Have a seat." Da, da, da. Started, they all start introducing themselves. As it w- turned out, I, I was sitting at a table with like two other Marines. Uh, and I think we were the only, and then Marty. Yeah, was and I, was, I was sitting on the table with the two couples. Yeah, um, I immediately spilled the first beer. Like I, literally took one and it was just like <laughs> <laughs> another. Ah. <laughs> like okay, and and as I'm taking a sip of the foam, the guy takes it out of my hand and just replaces it with a full beer. I was like, yeah, all right. <laughs> I was like this guy's all right. <laughs> like shit. Like it was good. And then uh, I mean, we get on the boat. We didn't dive the first day. No, we didn't. Well, fuck, we didn't even get on the boat till what like six o'clock, six thirty seven, yeah, yeah. six o'clock at night. So the first day, I think we had dinner. Yeah. Yeah. And uh and then we went underway and we spent the night no, we spent the night on the dock. And then first thing in the morning we went underway to the first dive site. Yep. Tell me you have some uh Titanic fucking So they They wouldn't let us. There was there was was one time that we got to go to the bow. Yeah. While we were underway. And literally all the passengers and the entire crew were out there because the dolphins were swimming. Um, in the you know the wake of the bow yeah um and yeah. so that other than that they they essentially were like look when we're underway like we don't really want you going up front at all for any reason unless we tell you huh. yeah um if we're moored and you want to go up front come find one of us so we can go up there because if you go over the side and nobody's there yeah. like the swim platform it's not like it's you know, oh, right. the pool's not open 24 yeah. 7 it's only open when we dive and is once there, everybody's back in they close it off is there anything up front just uh, like the anchor some weights yeah oh so it's like working yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like working yeah. shit up there so there's yeah, nothing there wasn't like a deck with chairs right. and all no. yeah there's no reason to go up there anyway yeah right? like and so yeah. immediately when we saw the boat i was just like we're totally doing the titanic thing yeah he's like fuck yeah and like that was one of the first briefings. That we the whole first night was all. As <laughs> soon briefings. as they said that shit, John and I looked at each other. We we're like, "Fuck." <laughs> the best part was, <laughs> so each each stay room had a uh, had a uh, smoke detector. Yeah, and the guy was like, "You'll know if the battery's going low because it'll it'll beep." <laughs> and immediately, John and I look around the room, and we're like, "I think we'll be safe on this trip because there was." You know, Go ahead, say it. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> like there, there was no people who often let their thing beep <laughs> on the boat. So, but immediately, John and I start looking around, and so did like a couple other guys, and we all were like, oh, ah! "We're all gonna be friends." <laughs> <laughs> like we knew right away who was like cool. <laughs> it was funny, dude. It was funny as shit. <laughs> oh god. 
Yeah. But yeah, the, the whole first night and a little bit of the uh, once we were underway in the morning for breakfast. We so briefings. What other rules were you going to break until you got briefed not to? Oh. Uh, weed. Couldn't have any of those substances on the on board. Yeah, yeah it's a zero tolerance policy, Turks Caicos. Yeah, well, that's fair. Yeah, you know. yeah, that's that's uh, most. Yeah, that's most. Yeah, though. yeah. Uh, there was uh, any other countries really? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't. Wanna, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want a Britney Griner yourself, right? <laughs> you know, yeah. So. <laughs> I don't know. The rest of them were pretty. I mean, they're pretty self explanatory rules. Yeah, and dude, they kind of gave us a run of the shit. And they were pretty cool about it. They were like, look, when we're diving, we're going to have a guide down there. You can follow us. Or not. But you don't have to. Just so let us know you're not going to. Yeah. You know, we were like, okay. You know, uh, one time, uh, shout out to John for his uh, underwater navigation skills. <laughs> because me, him, and the two guys that we were fucking helping. Yeah. One uh, dude was an amputee. Yeah, one dude was an amputee. A newer diver. And dude, and dude, this fucking kid, man. Like, he was awesome. He was great. They were, they were all fucking great. But, but he was a very new They diver. kept They kept telling him, hey when you get to 2000 PSI, let us know and we'll turn around. Well, this kid would be in the back cause he struggles. Yeah. You know, it's and he's trying to work his way to he the works front. Way <laughs> all the way to the fucking front. Yeah, By the time he gets up there to tell him to, he's got fucking half a tank now. And it's like, fuck man. So we start at 3000 PSI yeah. in the tank when we get right. to, so we, we split it into thirds, at least on this trip. And so we did one third out one third back and then one third to whatever hang around under the boat and then we start our safety stop at yeah. 700 we ended at 500 we always get on the boat with no less than 500 psi right yeah and that's just safety yeah. that's sure really it's all it is and that's pretty the 500 psi thing's that's pretty standard, standard but the thirds the thirds is a little different yeah um, the thirds what the captain was a huge cave diver and they run everything in thirds so oh. he was just like this is what we do here yeah yeah, and every, well, by, the, by the end of it, everyone was like, "That this works perfect." But when you're diving with a bunch of people you don't know, that extra third will give you time to take care of any problems. Exactly. And in this yeah. particular or sense, the boat. Yeah. <laughs> in this particular sense, they needed that extra third. So, um, I, I, I before that, he had, I'd seen him struggle. So I was like, "Dude, just let one of us know, and we'll tell him because we're pretty quick." Yeah, John and I were always towards the front of the pack when it comes to finning. Right, yeah. we were pretty fast underwater. And um, so we would be up, we would be there and he got a hold of me and I was like, all right. And he tells me he's got, he's like, yeah, I got two. And I was like, I got you. Cool. So I go and I tell the guy, his name's Juan. I'm like, Hey, you know, underwater sign language. But yeah. I tell him that yeah. guy's got 200, got 2000, you know, and he's like, cool. We turn turn around. Around. So every other dive we'd, we'd work to grid. They would go, they would go from the boat out to the wall, either turn left or right. But then we would come back up and go back up to the boat. Right. right. Well, this time he went out, turned right, turned around. Went back and was going to right angle it. Well, John and I took the him and that dude and his dive buddy. We fucking turned around and went back and did a fucking square. Well, now, <laughs> no. So when on these dive sites, right, there's they give us a map. They draw a map on a, on a dry erase board of what the dive site looks like. Yeah. The depths, where the mooring chain is, the, the actual anchor. Because technically the boat doesn't matter. I don't give a shit where the boat is. Yeah, yeah. the boat right? can move. Yeah, wherever wherever the boat is drawn on the map is roughly where we're getting in off the off the aft of it, the back of the boat. Yeah, yeah. But that boat could swing 180 degrees, so that location doesn't matter. The mooring pin. Yeah, that's key. Yeah. So as soon as we get in the water, right, we start descending. I take my bearing. Okay, the wall's here. The boat's above me, pointing that way. That's the mooring. So then I immediately shoot an azimuth to the mooring ball. I'm like, okay, cool. And I do reverse azimuth. That's the wall. Then I find a, a rock formation, something on the wall right there. And that's my fucking, my landmark. Right. So no matter where we go, I come back that wall. I find that landmark. I just, shoot my azimuth. I'm on the mooring ball. And then I can find the boat. Doesn't matter where the boat yeah, is. Just basic fucking right. land nav. Yeah. So, right? so we get, we get, we get off the boat. We go to the wall. We go down. Right. I already shot my azimuth to the mooring ball. We swim down. So we're below where you can see the boat or anything like this. We're at about this point. 90 feet. Yeah. So we hit our turnaround. And typically, once we hit our turnaround, we'll go back. We'll get a little bit higher in, in depth. Yeah. A little bit less depth, for lack of a better word. Yeah. The right way to say it, maybe. Um, because you burn through gas slower at, yeah. a, at you shallower know, depth. the shallower depth. Yeah. So we were at like 90. And so we got the turnaround. So I banged 90 degrees right. Right? Because if I take another 90 degrees right, I go right back to where I came from. So they hit, hey, turn around. Cool. I hit 90. We swim up the wall. We get to about 65 feet. And I'm like, this is about good. I shoot at 90. Bam. And then we start swimming back. And at this point, I'm behind the other three. 
right? So we're going back and I see my rock formation. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. So there's that. So now I just got to shoot my azimuth. And out of the corner of my eye, I look up and the boat's here. Now, mind you, when we got in the water, it was 180 degrees yeah. further <laughs> back the other way. <laughs> yeah. So the, instead of the, everybody else coming up over the wall, they swam the wall to where they thought they got in, not the mooring line. Uh, then they came up and there's no fucking boat. <laughs> yeah. And now this boat is 120 feet long with probably what, 100 feet of mooring line? Yeah. So you're 250, 300 feet away from where you thought you got in. Yeah. Visibility is only 100 feet. Right. So you can't, you can't just physically be like, oh, there's a boat. You don't see shit. Yeah. And so now you're like, and then there's no landmarks. Because it's the Atlantic. We weren't in the Caribbean. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean, if we were in the Caribbean, we'd have been fine. It would have been like, oh, there it is. No, <laughs> like, it was probably similar visibility. You think? Yeah, there was super clean water. It was there was a couple of times when it was murky. But, yeah. yeah. But so it was before where I needed to turn is where I saw the boat. Right. And so I fuck, I wait for these guys. None of them are paying attention. So I get my I'm like just slapper. I'm like just like hanging and out I'm like, looking ding, at the ding, ground. Ding. And like, they all turn around and look at me. And I'm like, where's the boat? And they're like, huh? And then I was like, it's right there. It's and like, they all, I right see there. all three of them go like went, this. And they're like, oh, oh fuck. And then they start. Because <laughs> it, it was over here. Now it's right there. Okay. So we go up. But we get on the boat. Well, So the other two guys, they do the safety stop. And they get on the boat. Me and John stay down. We Instead of doing a three-minute safety stop, we end up doing like a 10-minute safety stop. Because we're looking I'm, for people. Uh, I'm doing 360s. And I can't. The whole time. Bubbles we're just like anywhere. We're like, dude, we don't know where the fuck these guys are. So I cut pop up. He stays down for a second. And I'm like, I look at the crew. I'm like, yo, get the boat ready. <laughs> get the tender ready. Cause I don't know where the fuck these guys are, man. They miss, they miss the fucking mission. <laughs> like, like, that like, is my biggest fear on, on a diving in a boat in the ocean is like, let's say the current kicked up and yeah. all these guys got taken in a current and we missed it somehow. They could literally surface a mile away. Yeah. yeah. In a matter of minutes. Yeah. Like it, and there's nothing you can do about it. You can't swim against the current. Right. You yep. know what I mean? Yep. And so, like, that's my biggest fear is, like, I have to surface and I'm a mile away from the boat. I have no e I have no anything but an orange fucking weenie that I can fill with air and put up and yeah. hopefully somebody, see, you know. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even have one of those. I was just with him. <laughs> <laughs> He's my orange weenie, too. Yeah. I get it, dude. He's my orange weenie. <laughs> so uh, uh, they, they eventually they made it back because one of the guys, Doug, was like, oh, they periscope. He was like, this is bullshit. So he went up, did a three minute safety yeah. stop and fucking periscope. It was like, it's 500 yards this way. <laughs> well, it was like, funny. Oh. He, he went back down and he's like 500 that way. And everyone was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. So by the time they all get back on at this point, it's a joke. We're like. Fuck took you all so long. <laughs> like, you guys get lost when you guys lieutenants. Like we start talking shit. <laughs> and awesome. they're like, and they're and all then pissed the, off at fucking Juan. One guys. of the guys was uh, he took off. Man. He was a pretty he high up officer. Yeah. And uh we'll say that. And he wasn't that happy with how that everything went on that yeah. dive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was pretty funny. Okay. But yeah, like I I mean, now in Juan's defense, it was his first week on the boat. It's his first time at that dive site. First time at any of the sites that he he guided. Uh, it was his first time on every single site. I thought and he did. I've done. I thought he did. I've guided some some dives on sites where it was my first time guiding yeah. and the first time diving at that site, and it's fucking nerve wracking. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. Because like, you want to you want everyone to have fun, but you also need to maintain what everyone's going. You know, the air consumption. You have to maintain yeah. depth. You have to maintain the group together you have to maintain the right direction i'm focused on making dick jokes as yeah. many as i can <laughs> and then yeah. you gotta worry Shit. about your speed and juan didn't worry about his speed he was fucking yeah, god he's, he's fast yeah. he's a fast fucking swimmer but until somebody tells him you won't know true like my first time when i when i guided a dive i fucking took off and people were like burning through gas to catch up with me and i didn't know but i was yeah. worried about everything else and right. my speed was just autopilot well when i was learning to dive my dive buddy was the guy diving guiding the dives because joey was my dive buddy mm -hmm. and joey can fin his ass off yeah, yeah. as you well he's a fucking seal team six guy so he better be able to you know what i mean so like like i kept up with him right and that was fine right but there were other people in the group that were like hey man can you uh you slow down you turn it down turn down a notch and they were like yeah yeah sure no but worries. that and the less you move the less gas you consume yeah, yeah. um and so like my one of my favorite dives when mateo would lead the captain because he was a cave diver so he'd literally get in a cave diver position. It looked like Superman. This fin's kind of up like a frog kick. And he'd like one kick every, I don't know, 20 seconds. Yeah. He had the long ass free diver but fins. Though. He would literally kick once and then he would just go. 
and go. Like he was chilling. And go. And it was just like that dude could probably die for four hours <laughs> on one breath. Just fucking <laughs> chilling, dude. He don't give a fuck. Like dude. Mm-hmm. He was impressive. He was an impressive dude. Um which, if you watch the episode, you guys met Mateo because we interviewed him, uh, yeah. the captain of the boat, and then the second captain, Rusty, who is now our favorite person oh on the planet. God. That's such a this fucking dude. legend. An absolute legend. So we talk about like like some of his passions on the episode. And I encourage you guys to go back and watch that part with him because it's cool. But later, he was telling us more stories. This guy has lived a fucking life. Yeah. Man. Like, well, we were telling you about it when we got back that night. And he was born in 81. Yeah. 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 Like, and I'm he's, like, fuck. Like, which we had to remind him because he thought he was 42. And I'm like, he's, no, you're 43, dude. 43, bro. <laughs> and he's like, how do you know? I'm like, because I'm 42 and I'm born in 82. And he's like, I was like, and ma- that math, no math. And he's like, well, shit, I am 43. He was one of those. <laughs> right? like, uh, he's, he's just guy was fucking legend, dude. An absolute legend. But uh, he was telling us about like how he he was like, yeah, I was, I was hiking this volcano in Guatemala. And then they were like, oh, this one's not active, but that one is. And he's like, I've already hiked for eight hours. And he's like, well, fuck it. I'll hike that one too. So it was like two extra hours to get to the top of that one, just so we can see the active volcano. And it was just like followed by. He goes. Then I learned to parasail. I went to Nepal because the only guy that's ever sur- like successfully survived parasailing off Mount Everest lives there and teaches parasailing. Then I want to learn from him. And I'm like, yeah, no shit. Uh, and like you had a good analogy. You're like, that's like having Dale Earnhardt Jr. teach you how to drive. Yeah. <laughs> like, like yeah, not necessary. <laughs> Probably cool. not necessary. Yeah. Like. Uh, but the guys just you want to talk about a fascinating life, dude. I don't know if I'd pick. Yeah, uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where'd he learn? <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> We've lost Dale Earnhardt. <laughs> um, anyways, yeah. All in all, dude. Legendary trip. Nice. Legendary. It was. Trip. Now, if you're thinking about doing a liveaboard, and. Diving isn't something that you want to solely do on your trip. Do not do it. Yeah. It is it's a not waste of your time, money, and effort and energy. Yeah. But if you want to dive, you will have an amazing time. It literally, it was all we did. Yeah. It's a fucking like yeah. awesome yeah. time, man. So yeah. Well, Mikey, we talked about it before y'all left, but mm. how was diving with sharks? You know what, dude? Admittedly, I was terrified then, and I'm not stupid enough to not still be a little scared. Because that's their house, you know. Uh, but as far as I guess, terrified is the wrong word. I found a new respect for, yeah. around those animals, yeah. and uh, yeah, dude. I, honestly, the, they they give less of way less of a shit than we do about them. They're just they're more curious than anything. Yeah, they're yeah. like, what, and then at night you're essentially helping them help feed because you light up the fucking world oh, with lights, yeah. and they're like, oh shit. I could see everything. So they start just fucking going yeah. nuts. If anything, they're on your team. Like, yeah. especially like, with the nurse sharks, like you'll be shining something and literally the nurse shark will come up next to you and be like, what are you looking at? <laughs> just like, it'd be looking with you. You're like, hey, yeah. what's up, dude? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, a, it's like a symbiotic na- like yeah. relationship, dude. Yeah. So uh, that was kind of cool. Um, I miss the I miss the cool shark dive the yeah. the, the shark the night dive with the, sharks the sharknado that yeah that was that was one of them. But the so we went to this one fucked, site but. and uh, so typically when you see like videos of people diving and there's sharks all over the place they feed right and feeding it'll attract sharks but it can also turn them potentially aggressive depending on how often they do it if they if they take a break or if there's more you know what I mean yeah. like it's it, it's not a it's not the best practice well it's like when you're feeding you see the videos of people feeding the monkeys and then they're, they're not like oh thank you very much no they're like, like Fuck, give, give me, me more, more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah same thing um so this dive set they were at they've never been fed this is all organic activity yeah and i guess somehow over years and years and years of doing this all the sharks in this one specific dive site have learned that like Oh, in the evenings we can go here and hunt, and every once in a while they turn the lights on for us, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and that's it. And it was not, it was just completely filled with nurse sharks and Caribbean reef sharks. Um, Which, like, if I'm gonna dive with sharks, those are the two that I'm cool with. Yeah, but they're uh, yeah. they're also like the two least aggressive on the planet. <laughs> like they're fucking super chill. Like and nurse, I, I mean, I don't, I couldn't tell you how many there were. I think nurse sharks were basically dogs. Oh, they're puppies. They're puppies. Dude. Yep. Like they were just like, one of them snuggled Rusty. Yeah. Like just got up in his shit yeah, and was like, like snuggling. Snuggled and he was like, hey man, fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the first, the, the first night dive we did was cool because there was a structure there. Uh, 
called the dome which which was the subject of a like a 1980s not, or slash early 90s french tv show where like they would go on a it was clearly it a got bad canceled idea. because it was so unsafe yeah it was super dangerous like, like how they were making these contestants dive down into this cage like I guarantee you they all got the bends. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. And like it was so bad. And like well, the cage is all torn apart and fucked up now. So you can't like go in the cage anymore because right. it's all like taken apart and everything. But well, the hurricanes have fucked it up over the years. Yeah. But it was a big ass dome. It probably had, I don't know what, 15, 18 feet tall probably. inside it. Yeah. And probably. it was just a, an entire metal dome and it had one little porthole to go in and out of it. Which our big asses wouldn't have fit through any goddamn There's no way. way. Like you I, could tell these are tiny. I tried to get like <laughs> under the structure in spots where I thought I could fit. And then I'd like wiggle in there, and all of a sudden I was like, Kink. and I was like, "Oh shit, I'm stuck!" Yeah. <laughs> I have to wiggle back out. He looks over and he sees me, and I'm like between like this little triangle thing, and yeah. he's like, "You coming?" I'm like, "No," <laughs> and I'm like, "No, I'm not." <laughs> like we we I got we, very adventurous on this. Trip. You you and I communicate <laughs> extremely well underwater. <laughs> we do because like we like read each other's fucking minds. Yeah. And, like we'll do, I'll do some weird fucking sign language, and he's like, "Got, got it." it. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. What was the one you were trying to tell me? Like this is this dive site's trash or something like that? <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, this place is fucking boring. He was like, uh huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go. It used to look like this. It does not look like that. But anymore. it was a complete dome. It's not even like that anymore. But it used to be a whole circle. And what's the, what was the purpose of this? They filmed a TV show where they had to swim down, and they had like mermaids that were topless that had scuba equipment. There's titties. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there's definitely titties. They had scuba equipment. But so this guy's taking a breath from the surface, diving down and then breathing compressed air and then swimming around, you know, depth changes the whole nine. And then eventually going back to the surface on a mix between surface air and compressed. Like it's not, it's not good. That's what it looks like. That's now. what it looks like now. It looks like shit. Yeah. Huh. That's well, actually that's, better than it looks now. Fuck. That's just because all the hurricanes. No, that's exactly how it was when we were there. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Yep. Um, I'm trying to see if they have footage in here. Oh, from the, that actual show. They, yeah. They, they, they showed us a little bit of it. Yeah. So it is available somewhere. We'll find it somewhere. But um but yeah, it was uh it was interesting. Yeah. It was an interesting fucking trip, man. Pago Pago. Yep. Oh. That's what it is. Treasure of Pago Pago. Yes. Is the name of the of the show. Um Yeah, this is it. You're gonna see some titties. Look, there's one. Oh. <laughs> That's Sorry, a, viewers. Can't well, you can't you can't really see them that good. Yeah, it's it's, it's all blurry. It's basically blurred out, man. You got to think this is probably a VHS that got uh, like fucking somebody just filmed the right? TV. Yeah. Oh shit. But yeah. Oh, he's going off her tank. Off of her tank and a breath of air from the surface, and then they put him inside. And then they hand the reg set through, or just the mouthpiece through. He's got to go through this little thing, and then they they pick up like these little pearls, and the they like they have to get a certain amount of pearls. It's him and a girl, and they're like on a team. Oh, it's like a contest. It's yeah. like a game show. Yeah. Oh. And like I saw, but like that- right now, this dude has no, like, no air. He's just on a on a breath hold, which is compressed air, which is not right at all. No, not not a good move. Yeah. <laughs> you never in scuba diving. Anytime you take your regulator out of your mouth, you're supposed to blow bubbles because yep. that allows whether you're changing depth for expansion or uh. you know whatever so you're not screwing yourself i will tell you scuba regulators are uh impressive and i will confirm officially yeah that you can absolutely vomit through one <laughs> <laughs> uh and i can witness that from about a foot and a half away yep yep i really wish you wouldn't have turned your camera off i know you did it because you were being a nice guy i did it because i want you to die yeah <laughs> but i was holding my shit in i was good like i had my fucking rag in my mouth like uh no i got fucking vertigo man my my ears were so fucked that i tried to pop them and like i couldn't equalize and the whole fucking world started doing this <laughs> like, and i was like what the fuck and i get a hold of john and i'm like problem and he's like what and i'm like fucked up and he goes okay and he grabs me by the bcd and he's like breathe and i'm like i'm doing this to myself yeah, i'm yeah. like i'm breathing in and breathing out i'm breathing in and breathing out and i'm holding my regulator and i'm like <laughs> <laughs> and you can through the but the best regular. part is the way the reg's set up is it has exhaust that comes out the bottom on each side and so like he's puking and i know in his mind he's thinking it's like puking like puking but really what's going on is he looks like an angry dragon it's like (laughs) the (laughs) sides. and the crazy thing was is i only puked out the soup 
that we fucking ate. That was it. <laughs> there was there was no chunks. It was just like <laughs> thank goodness. I had ta- like soup and tacos for lunch, <laughs> and the only thing I puked out was the soup. It was weird, man. So it was just like, <laughs> but I'm holding this fucking thing in, just booting through the fucking ass. <laughs> he did it the first time where he couldn't. He's like, I could tell. Like I guarantee you, in his mind, he's like, surprisingly, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. like as soon as it got out, I was like. I am fine. I was like, everything's good, dude. And he was just like, then I heard him laughing. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, everything's fine. So I will confirm for you scuba divers out there that didn't yeah. believe that, you can absolutely puke through your egg. It's real. Was that the that was the dive that we cut? Was that the one we cut early? Because I was feeling yeah, like dog yeah. shit. That, that, yeah. I wasn't kidding. I was gonna say that was the first <laughs> time that I ever cut a dive early. Yeah. I, yeah. I've canceled a dive before before we even got in, but that one like I mean, we, we could have went another twenty minutes. Yeah, and I mean, it was like that, and we were yeah. just like, mm, we you know cut what? it at no. like thirty minutes instead of forty. Yeah, right. Like it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, but yeah, that was that was but, interesting. That was fun. Yeah. Oh, you and you called dinosaurs on the first day. I did. I did. I had to get it. I had to get my sea legs under me. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, that first day, I was just kind of like sitting there and I was like, was the boat tippy at all? It was just enough. Yeah. It wasn't like, it, it was wasn't that enough. it was tippy, but it was just, it was constant movement. Yeah. It John was, never, was nice enough to film that one, though. Oh, I did. He did I, get I, that I, one under. As as I was eating lunch, I just filmed it out the window and I'm like taking bites. I'm like, oh, there, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I came back in and finished my lunch. It was fine. Like yeah. once I got it out, I was like, "Good hook, yeah. I'm fine." Yeah. Right? Like just got to get it going. Right? Yeah. I didn't. I didn't. I, get, I, I get seasick every day. I didn't yeah. get seasick, um, but I did walk into walls at the airport all day long. <laughs> he can confirm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, anybody who's ever spent like extended period of time on like on board a vessel, they know. Like you get back and you're like, "Oh goddamn!" Like yeah. I almost broke my fucking ankle right off the end yeah, of the boat. Did. Remember? No, that was in the parking lot in the marina. Yeah, we were walking after we got off the boat for the first time. I almost broke my fucking ankle. It's swollen as shit still. Yeah, that was, was fucked. Bad. It hurts. And I was just like, "Oh, that sucks." We went down to uh, so the Friday on our deco day, uh, we did two dives in the morning. We were out of the water, and we had I think we had twenty six, twenty seven hours in between uh, before our flight time. Yeah. So we need a minimum of twenty four, especially after all the, the the cumulative dives we did the whole week. Yeah. Uh, so we had like three hours before we had to do our wine and cheese cocktail party on the, the roof deck of the, of the ship. And so we decided that I took him on Libo. Yeah. He got Marine Corps Libo. The Marine Corps Libo. It was, it was me and three Marines <laughs> and we went into town and it was awesome. I tried. We took a loser cruiser in like, town. Was like, everything like, was right. <laughs> okay. I need to spend money on stupid shit. I need to. One of the guys bought I a needed, bracelet for his girl back home. Like I, it was fucking I right need to drink, And then Mike and I tried to get tattoos. So we, tried, <laughs> we tried to get tattoos. Somebody bought a whore. No, 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 that was it. They didn't, that was that was that was so, a big thing. Now I'll, I'll get into the rest of Friday night here in a minute, but let me get this part of it done first. <laughs> well, no, because I, I, I was, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll just get into the, the tattoo part. shop was cool as shit. Yeah, we but no, so, shop. so we get, uh, I had a whole point that I was going to make with this and it was really funny. I can't remember what the fuck it was. The deco day. Oh, so we went to Grace Bay. That's, that's where I was going with this. And so Grace Bay, I guess, was voted the number one beach in the world for like the 20 years like, straight. Yeah, a couple wow. decades. Yeah. And it's on Turks and Caicos. And so like, if you want to go check it out. And so obviously, you know, like, we're like, fuck it, let's go. Yeah. So we got a cab down there. And, um, and it was like I said, it was me, Mike, and the two other Marines. Um, and we didn't actually see the, the beach. We didn't go to the beach. <laughs> we just walked around like the, all the shops and yeah. the bars. If we would have had backpacks and fucking combat boots on, you would have been like, this is uh, this is Jacksonville, North Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's beautiful. But it's the thing about it is like, I, beach. Yeah. Uh, fucking gorgeous, man. But there's no reef or fish or anything. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's for, it's way out there. You go swim. Yeah. But no, it's beautiful. Um, but as so we go there, we walk into this tattoo shop and, uh, but let me back up a little bit. We the first shop we walk into is like a jewelry store and a little gift shop, and they had the cigars um, and all that stuff. So we did like a quick lap, and I was like, bought some Legos for the kids. Yeah, like this is not my place. A couple little rum cakes. Uh, was like, so we're getting ready to go, and the other two Marines are sitting in there, and we walk back into the jewelry side because that's where they were. And one of the dudes has a glass of champagne. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa buddy, I'm like, they got you, huh? He's like, uh, I'm like, well. We're going to meet. Cap's picking us up at, at five. I was fucking so, with him. I was like, what are you buying a phone? This dude, had, he went for a dive the very first day with his phone in his pocket. Uh, yeah. So down to, down to 90 feet. It was, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. He put it in a bag of rice. 
I was like, it might work by Friday. And so I, <laughs> like, so I asked hope. him, I was like, is that jasmine rice or, su- or sushi rice? And he's like, oh, I don't know why. I was like, well, I'm just trying to figure out who's going to come fix it. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other Marine, the other dude, he, he's a Marine, but he, he's originally from Turkey. Yeah. And he goes, oh, I hope it's a jasmine rice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's funny. Uh, they're, they're funny dudes. But, so Mike and I walk into the tattoo shop and, you know, we're thinking like, we, we don't know, we have like an hour and 45 minutes. Yeah. So it's going to be quick, small, like something fun. We're like, yeah. what if we get like a matching one that, you know, we put our legs together and it says something <laughs> or, you know, or whatever. And I'm like, like, oh, a, like a little shark or something. Yeah. yeah. Like I did it with the, with like the tail and he did it the opposite way. And we put it together. It's a shark, but you know, yeah. Or something, something like that. Right? And something we're just like, so we get to the tattoo shop. Just give, just give Haley and Mal a reason to call us home. Yeah. Up, basically. We get to the <laughs> tattoo shop and there's one person. It was the off season. Yeah. It's not tour season. Right? It's hurricane season. Yeah. So there's nobody on this island. Yeah. yeah. And so we walk in and that means there's four people in the shop besides the tattoo artist. And she's like, this is the busiest. This is the most amount of people I've seen in here in three months. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I don't know where the fuck you guys were last weekend. Yeah. <laughs> like type of thing. Yeah. And so we're like, hey, do you have time for. A and couple- they're all Americans. Yeah. yeah. That's in there. I'm like, do you have time for a couple quick tattoos? And she's like, well, I don't know. I'm finishing up this one. Then I got this. Her is next. And then their husbands, I think, are, are after that. And we're like, ah, oh, fuck, whatever. So we hung out and just bullshitted for a little bit. I oh, fucking, um, I did one of the sickest, sickest fucking burns. Yes. And that's where I was that. going with this story. This is, oh, it's so good. So one of the girl that's in the chair, she's getting a little inspirational quote on her back. And she, she had just finished. And yeah. I was like, I was like, oh, what'd you get? And it's something like. Something real. The fucking. sun rises after it sets or something like something, that. Like something it was, real fucking basic. Yeah. And it was so basic that I make the joke. I'm like, what do you got? Live, love, laugh, and laugh, hang in your house somewhere. Yeah. Live, and laugh, she, love in your house. And she goes, oh, and she lifts up the other side of her shirt and she's got it tattooed on her side. <laughs> <laughs> We're about fucking lost. And I was it. just like, basic bitches, meet your queen. <laughs> I was like, holy fuck. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Oh, dude. And her friend was like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you, she's still catching shit from her friend. Well, you know, that. like, we didn't even leave. Yeah, Tats and Tings. Tats and Tings. Uh, yeah. Super cool shop. Yeah, great. Um, they do really good work. Uh, yeah, it looked like a good time. Oh, mm-hmm. well, I like that one. That's yeah. awesome. Go back. There's the one. I like this one. It's on a shark bite. <laughs> that's fucking dope. This one. That's cool. Oh, yeah, that's real good. Yeah. Yeah, she does solid work, man. But yeah, that's what I was like. You know what? This, yeah. yeah, I'm in. Let's go. So I bought a hat instead because that's, I wanted to support him. Mm-hmm. Um, Eggs and bacon. Yep. Uh, shit, yeah. But, uh, shit, yeah. But yeah, so we, we leave there and we found a, like a local sports bar. I'm like, fuck, let's go to get a drink. We walk in there and the two Marines are barred, bellied up to the bar. <laughs> They're already <laughs> sitting there. We're like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> And I had one of the better fucking margaritas I've ever had in my life. Mm-hmm. It was solid. Yeah. Nice. And I, I took a sip of it. I looked at John. I was like, I'm taking my pants off. <laughs> <laughs> so now, so we, we we get, I don't even know, two, three drinks at the bar. Yeah. We already had probably, I don't know, two to four drinks before we left to go into town. Yeah. So then we go back and we do our wine and cheese party. I had that pina colada that was all fucking wrong. Oh, yeah. yeah. So on the way <laughs> back, I'm asking the, the driver and I'm like, hey, man, like, I know this is it's dead right now, but what where's if we were gonna go to a bar tonight, where would people be? And he's like, Oh, you got two spots. You got this place over here and you got that place over here. Uh and then there's a casino at the uh the Ritz. At the Ritz. And I was just like, sweet, he's like, yeah, but the casino doesn't open till four PM. I'm like, okay, whatever. Awesome. I have options. So we get back to the boat, we go up in the top deck. I take it back. We stop at the bar first, so we have another drink. Mm-hmm. And then we get to the boat, we go on the top deck and we start slamming beers. Yep. And wine and cheese. And so at this point, it's like, I don't know, seven thirty, eight o'clock at night. And I'm like riling everybody up. Yeah. I'm like, where are we going, boys? We got this bar. We get this bar. We get the casino. I got the cabbie's number, my phone. I got a couple guys stuff. off on the smoke deck. I'm having cigars and we smoke a cigar and I come back and I tap John on the shoulder. I'm like, hey, man, I'm going to get some chow at this bar in the marina. And he's like, OK, I'll be over there in a minute. And I was like, all right. And he's, I could tell he's already kind of fucking switched on. And I'm like, OK. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have one of those evenings. Great. So I go over to the bar, and a couple of the guys are already sitting there, and I sit down at their table and order food, and I eat yeah. my food and shit. And so no, I, no John, no right. John. After Hold they up. after they no leave, John. I got caught on the boat talking about cigars, and so I'm like an hour, probably about a solid hour into the conversation about cigars, and uh, 
And then like everything kind of, I don't know if I sobered up a little bit. John just drank his dinner. But everything so. made sense to me at this point because they're kicking us off the boat at 08. At this point, it's like 930 and I haven't packed a goddamn thing. Now I packed before all this because I'm fucking proactive like that. And so I was like, <laughs> if I walk down there and I meet these guys, we're going to go somewhere and I'm getting hammered. <laughs> so that's what you did no no i no. didn't i <laughs> i buddy you fucked were. everybody and i went and packed my stuff <laughs> so it was about 11 o'clock when everyone came back to the boat and they were hammered no. and i was at this point i'm like sober and packed i'm set, like i'm about ready to go to bed <laughs> yeah I, I sat up on as a matter of fact i got the fucking mosquito bites all over my legs to prove it shit i got i, I got chewed apart up i sat up on top of a couple of the guys talking bullshit till about 12 30 one o'clock yeah just yeah. kind of hanging out and drinking and stuff and then I went to bed. John was still awake. Yeah. And I was like, hey, I, I, was, like, I was like, you good? He's like, I just finished packing. And I was like, yeah. And then there, there had been one twat at the bar that was a bitch to one of the guys. Like she walked up to like our table. We're all sitting there yeah. talking and she walks up, but she's like, are you, do you guys live here? <laughs> and we go, no. And he goes, where do you live? And she goes, <clears throat> It just gives us, and I was like, I was like, never mind, go fuck yourself. <laughs> I was like, fuck away from us, bitch. Like, how dare you fucking be rude? You're you're interrupting us, you fucking yeah. rude twat. Like, it was just so weird how fucking rude she was. And I was like, get the fuck out of here. Fuck you. Like, I'm not gonna be fucking talk to my guy like that. Fuck that. You know, like. Yeah, she was talking to one of the amputees. Yeah, yeah. and he's uh, the sweetest guy ever, dude. He's yeah. like a super, he's a former X Gamers. Yeah. He's a, he, was a, he was a fucking, he was snowboarder. Snowboarder, yeah. And uh, just real super interesting guy. His name's Keith Deutsch. He's a fucking, he's an author. He's got a book out. Nice. Uh, he he runs a uh, e-bike shop and does mountain bikes, e-bikes in uh, uh, Michigan. Uh, Minnesota. Or Minnesota. And just a fucking super interesting, cool dude, right? And like, she was a talk to him. I was like, fuck you, bitch. I, <laughs> I gave him a nickname. Yeah, he did. John looks at me and he goes, because Keith, Keith's in good shape. Very good shape. So he'll get, he'll get out of the shower on the. I'm on the swim thing. platform, yeah. and I'm on the shower on the left. He's in the shower on the right. On the actual dive platform, the like the equipment yeah. area. Yeah. All my equipment is on the left. All his equipment is on the right. So when he got done with the shower, he went up the stairs on the right. I'm still showering. So like, my eyes are ground level. So I watch him go up the stairs, and I'm like, he's a single leg amputee. Yeah. And so he goes up the stairs and he's like, boink, 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 boink. And he gets to the top and he goes, boink, boink, boink down. And I was just like, oh. and I walk up to the side and I walk up to Mikey. To and I'm like, like, he's about to piss himself. And he's like, like what's like, up? And I'm like, what's the name of the lamp from Pixar? <laughs> 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 and I look over at Keith and I'm like, it's Keith now. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. It's funny. As it's shit. the only thing I could think of from that. Every time I seen him without, you know, when he was just hopping on one leg, and I was just like the fucking lamp. <laughs> as a matter of fact, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna plug his business. I have his card here. Um, his business is called uh, Ron's Cycle Shop, and it's in. Uh, it's basically motorcycle and bicycle sales. All right, Keith, I got a question. Yeah. I see in the front of that card, it says, Keith, you're the owner uh -huh. of Ron's Bicycle. Ron's is dead. Ron's is dead. Okay. My first right. thing. So, I was like, I'm like, Keith, what's the name of your shop? He's like, Ron's Cycle Shop. I was like, uh, he's like, it's my dad. I'm like, okay. Ron, <laughs> Keith's dad, Ron, passed away when he was 10. Uh, died of cancer when he was 10. And it yeah. was a very, very impactful moment in his life, right? Uh, and uh, he's kind of chased making him proud his whole yeah. life is the way yeah. he explained we had a real deep conversation about the it. Only real reason I, the only reason i brought it up is we have a cigar shop don's oh that's it's, it's like four owners removed from don at yeah this really they, <laughs> yeah. They, they, they keep the name like a, yeah. yeah uh but uh yeah his name's keith deutsch uh you can check him out at keithdeutsch.com if you want to look at his stuff but also uh check out ron's cycle shop in uh new prague minnesota yeah um, he recently got a, uh, e-bike contract for a government contract. So he's providing some e-bikes to yep. the military. Sweet. So it was a nice little fucking chunk for him. And yeah. yeah, he's doing pretty good. Yeah. Motivational speaker. There's my guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, interesting dude. Very interesting guy. Uh, really cool to fucking talk to and to get to know. And yeah, guys straight up. So check him out, man. He looks high as fuck right there. He is he the happiest is. guy. <laughs> he probably is. He is literally the yeah. happiest guy. He's super high. He's super high. He's super really high on top of a mountain. Yeah, yeah. Very he's, high. He's higher than everybody else. He's mountain high. Rocky Mountain high. 
Yeah. What a fucking cool dude, though. I, 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 dude, we had a, such a great experience. Everybody on the boat was fucking rad. Yeah. Like, um, and there were some guys, like, there's a dude that was on the on there that we dove with prior. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And he's doing awesome. He's yeah. doing fucking proud. way better than he was last time we saw him. Proud. <laughs> dude. Yeah. Uh, he, he had uh, since partook in ayahuasca. Yeah. And uh, uh, through the Heroics Hearts pro- project, which is something that you and I are both interested yeah, we in, should. Ryan. We should. He went to Peru and did nice. it. Um, he said it's not as fucking lame as they make it out, like all the prep shit. He's yeah. like, he's like, meh. Yeah. You ain't gotta worry about it. All right. so, <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, all in all, man, fucking real interesting time. Yep. Interesting group of folks. Had a good time. Everything was awesome. So cool. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, that's a good that's, fucking recap. That's, that's an the, hour. That's yeah. the second time you heard us talk about it. So yeah. I think we'll leave you at that. Yeah. yeah there you go. <laughs> so we don't bore you to death. For us, it was a, an absolutely amazing trip. Um, yeah. For what it did for the guys that were on the boat as well. Uh, Fuck you, And just dude. seeing the progression of the guys that we already knew. And and now, then, um, now, Scott, stop talking so goddamn much. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Sorry, I didn't have much if, to contribute. If you quit cutting us off, we'd be able to tell this story a lot sooner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah. Uh, not, not really a debate today. No. Just kind of a little recap uh, of story time. That was really it. Yeah, it was fun. But, uh uh yeah you know what i'll raise my cup i don't even have a cup I got, anymore i saved one sip for it i got a little bit in there yep. cheers boys thanks for being my freedom friend my sippy cup. Or tippy cups mm, it's delicious yeah uh you know what you guys know all the thing like share subscribe do all those things smash those buttons three little things man it's pretty easy to do john smoke on scotty drink on god damn it kids freedom, freedom to fuck, fuck on. on later